it is fun to just be able to watch the machines. And, like, I guess the reason we see a lot of these hunter killers with the regular machines is, like, as we read a while, just recent, like, fairly recently with Hephaestus, he's not actively, like, trying to destroy the human race. Um, it, it just try, is trying to prevent overpredation of machines. Uh, like, sort of like a protection, basically a protection measure. So that's why you get, like, the ravagers and stuff and the scroungers with these, you know, more herbivory, I guess, type creatures, type machines, because Hephaestus is trying to protect them. Because, like, these hunter-killers don't actively seek out hunters. They just protect what what they do have. Like, if you wander up to them, they will attack you, but... Anyway, this is super cool. And I just made this little baby tall neck. It's my little baby tall neck. I'm so excited. Ugh. Shoot, I should maybe go back to Gaia, but I kind of want to wait until... Oh, and there was that survey drone. Oh, I was so close to it, but I don't think I triggered it. Like, I didn't I didn't activate it. It's still a question mark. Dang it. I wonder if it's... Oh, well. I should go back to Gaia and maybe get some of this stuff, like, figured out. But at the same time, I kind of don't want to go back to Gaia until I get another module. I don't feel like a lot's going to have changed. Like, I don't feel like my friends will be back yet, you know. You know what? I don't actually know what this episode is, like how long it is. So we're just let's just uh, let's just go ahead. And let's go check out the base really quick. I'm pretty sure the episode's gonna be fairly short because I spent the majority of it quiet and fuming <laughs> and in pain, contorted. But now I am not in pain, and I need a cauldron and a tonic at the same time. Ma'am, let me in. The outside world is scary and unforgiving. And I at least have one drone for you. Oh, Aloy. Your Karja friend came well, through. Oh! <gasps> she went to that Oseron oh. camp you two were looking for, to the southwest. Oh, are you gonna be like... the secretary liaison person? How, how have you been? Aloy. Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. You sure you're okay being alone in here? I have Gaia. And learning how to interpret the glyphs of the old ones, it keeps me occupied. Have you gone back to plain song at all? I thought about it. But I wouldn't know what to tell them. The chorus already thinks me a thorn in the thicket. If they knew what we did to Fa, even if they understood, There'd be little they could grasp about all this. No. For now, I must leave the tribe behind. Oh, look at all these. Okay. Oh, wow. So, how does a tribe like the Utaru manage to maintain the peace with warriors like the Tanakh? As I, holding them as off, I wear them. <laughs> when our fields bloomed aplenty... The Tanakh looked upon our lands with envy. But Plainsong's dishes provided sanctuary and high ground to keep invaders at bay. In the end, even the Tanakh saw sense in a truce. The Utaru promised to provide the Tanakh with food from our crops every year. In exchange, the Tanakh would relinquish one of their own, a veteran, to train the Utaru in combat. This custom was abandoned a few years after the derangement. But some veterans still remain in the plains. I believe I've met them already. I've been meaning to ask, what's the deal with I you and the course? I love this paint. You didn't seem to be on the best of and terms. And the outfit. That's what happens when you're the one Utaru who insists on publicly defying them. Twice. When the Karja invaded the Utaru plains, they did more than just attack our villages. They burned our fields, took our people as slaves, and murdered those who were too weak to make the trip back to Meridian. To be sacrificed in the Sun Ring. I was helping the healers back then, as waves of refugees swarmed into Plainsong. The chorus was divided in how to face the invaders. 
Some saw sense in raising arms. Others believed the dishes would keep us safe, as they had many times before. And while they bickered, I buried the seeds of the fallen. I couldn't have been easy, seeing your people suffer while the Karja invaded your lands. I come from a small village near Plainsong. My grandmother used to say there was no seed that wouldn't grow there. I moved to the dishes when I decided to apprentice as a healer. When the Red Raids began, I thought about going back. But the injured kept pouring into Plainsong, day after day. So I kept putting it off. One day, I woke up to hear a Karja raiding party had ransacked my village during the night. I rushed there with the healers to help the survivors, but... There weren't any left. The smell of burning flesh haunts me to this day. I'm sorry, Zo. I made it a point to appear before the chorus as soon as we returned, to demand that we take a stand against the invaders. I was denied. So I left to fight on my own. I was gonna say, how did she do that? Like, try to maybe meet up with somebody or people? You said you set out to fight the Karja alone? Teacher? I did. But it turned out I wasn't the only one. News of my disagreement with the chorus spread through the plains. Before I knew it, I had more than a dozen Utaru warriors ready to follow me into battle. We knew we couldn't take on the Karja armies head on, but we also knew the lay of the land better than they did. We ambushed smaller raiding parties, sabotaged their supply lines, and hit their encampments at night. Sounds like you were a force to be reckoned with. Enough that the Tanakh took notice. When the clans began to push the Karja back east, they let us join their ranks. Oh, nice. We chased the enemy all the way to Baron Light. You said you were at Baron Light when the Tanakhs defeated the Karja? Tanakh marshals climbed the Cliffs of the Daunt under cover of night, then attacked from the other side. Before we knew it, the gates were open, and the full force of the clans burst through. What happened next was... Not something I like to remember. Yeah. When all the dust and blood settled, I smelled it again. The stench of burnt flesh. Our enemies defeated. What was left of my squad returned to the Utaru Plains. I went back to Plain Song. But even as the harvest passed, it didn't feel like I'd truly returned at all. It seems like a war Is that thing. When you became a grave singer? I thought soothing the suffering of others would somehow appease my own. Then you came along and gave me a choice. I could either sing at people's graves or fight for a chance to keep them alive. I'm glad you chose the latter. Listen, sometimes I feel like Aloy's voice lines aren't always, like, super deep, but the people around her have some really meaningful conversations, and, like, I'm tearing up a little bit. Like, that's, like, it sounds like they probably talk to, like, veterans or something to get their experiences, you know? At least, like, you know, and changed it for, like, this particular, like, sort of setting, but, like, still. It's like, whoa, it just it really hits you, you know? Mmm. You mentioned you've been teaching yourself how to read? Yes. Gaia was kind enough to put together a list of glyphs used by the old ones. She helped me decipher some of the data you've collected and showed me how to use the focus to help the process. It's not easy, but it's been working so far. That's good. That's so exciting! Literacy! Woo! Did Gaia tell you anything about Zenith? She did. Though it wasn't exactly easy to believe. To think that there are places among the stars where life can bloom as it does here. It is... humbling, to say the least. And heartbreaking. That such life should be bent on destroying ours. Yeah. Sounds like you met my friend Talana. Yes. The Karja Huntress. I haven't seen armor like hers since the Red Raids. 
But Varl tells me that she too suffered at the hands of the Mad Sun King. Many Karja yeah. did. She's one of the good ones. Trust me. So you've been talking to Gaia? Yes. She was kind enough to take me through some of the history of the Old Ones, including their demise and the heroic actions of her creator, Elizabeth Sobek. I was surprised to see she was you. Past, but reborn? <laughs> Not that I claim to understand how. Yeah, well, it's complicated. I need to go, but if you need anything, you can contact me through your focus. I'll keep that in mind. She seems like she would be very content on her own. Like, uh, not complacent, but like, um, not necessarily that she would need... I mean, everybody needs company, but that not, she doesn't necessarily seem like she would... What am I trying to say? That she would thrive in solitude. Chosen on her own, you know? Oh, it's my stash. Very nice. Good, I'm low on everything. She is standing in... Well, it doesn't look like a... But she could sit down. It doesn't look very comfortable. Where's Gaia? Looks like this room's changed. Oh, yeah. Is that your this doing, Gaia? I can re-fix yes. stuff. I have repurposed the displays to track the cauldrons you have acquired data from. You doing okay? You don't sound so great. Give me velociraptors. Oh no. Oh. Uh, oh. Oh. Craft this override to unlock the ability to override this machine. Um, so I can override the Velociraptors right now? Iota has these, like, four that I, I can't unlock yet, but I can later. Okay, that's cool. As long as I can override the, the Velociraptor, I'm good, I'm good. Mom, where are you? It's so Welcome back. Hi, thank you. He, how are you doing? Hi, Gaia. Hello, Aloy. Looks like they gave it a background because Gaia's so bright. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna ask. I'll be on my way. I wish you safe travels. Thank you. I'm gonna go do this over here. Okay, data module's in. Error. Data missing. Oh, you want me to do that one? sure how that was gonna work so now it's not just a starry sky but Gaia can like actually see the world I know when I can uh, I think when I connect all of them it'll be different but I for this right now I can just walk into like a really beautiful drone vision of the area I picked it up in that's cool enjoy Gaia oh dang never mind okay bye enjoy your stars Oh, I suppose I should call this one here, seeing as how I have no idea how long it is, what time it is, what year it is. <laughs> um, but thank you all so much for joining me. I appreciate you dealing with me haphazardly scrambling through this game. I think in the next one... Uh, I should go help that young man, shouldn't I? Maybe I'll go help him really fast. 
Uh, or not. I think I'm going to do the cow root next. It's been, uh, my brain hurts from doing the cauldron. I want to reward myself by seeing the hot guy again. No, okay. I say hot guy. Uh, the brooding man. <laughs> I want to see the brooding man again. <laughs> And further the main quest, of course. Anyway, thank you all so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Oh, also, I get to see Talana again. I think probably that that, that I think probably that that quest has opened up after coming here. Hopefully. Um, but yes, thank you all so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Really quick, I want to say thank you to my patrons, to all my patrons, but to especially Riz Kalito, my sapling tier patron. Thank you so much for your support. And Christopher, my tree tier patron, who is the super bestest. I super duper appreciate you. Thank you so, so much for your support. And thank you all again for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.